Hey everyone, welcome to Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Core data can be hard. Writing unit tests with core data can be even harder. And that's why in this episode, we're gonna take a look and see what the common pitfalls are when it comes to writing unit tests with core data, how to avoid them, and what the number one debugging setting you need to set at all times when writing unit tests with core data. So if you wanna write some sweet tests, come on in, I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so let's start off with a very simple app. Let's just see what we've got here. I've got a core data model set up that literally has one employee with one attribute called first name, that's it. Then I've got a view controller, which simply creates an employee and updates it. And that's it, it's a very simple app, it doesn't do anything. But I'm gonna show you three different ways we can write unit tests for this app and some of the pitfalls we run into. Let's start with a simple case. Here I've got a simple employee manager which basically just creates a simple view context. This is the main view context, which for 99% of all cases, when you're building apps with core data, this is gonna be fine. This is the main thread that we're working against with core data. Everything's gonna be read and written to it. So this manager simply creates employees, fetches employees, updates and deletes Does your typical CRUD applications. This is what we want at unit test, our manager, we wanna make sure it works. Watch what happens if we naively come over here and set up a unit test and start writing some tests to create employees, update employees, and delete them. When we hit Command U and we go run, the tests run, and boom, we get some failures. We can create an employee okay, but updating doesn't work. If we create an employee named John and change his name to Jonathan, he still finds John when he shouldn't be there. And when we go to delete and read, even though we've created three employees, deleted one, and we're expecting two, we get back three. Like what gives? And if we run these unit tests again, we'll see that these numbers change. Now we're getting seven employees. If I run them again, now we're getting 11. So this is the naive way of writing unit tests in core data. And what actually is going on here is this. Our app and our unit tests are sharing the same main context, which core data uses to save all of its users and all of its data on disk. This is a collision of data. We can't just use the same context over and over again. We're gonna be overwriting each other. It's gonna be very confusing. So that's the first problem. That's the challenge we run into if we naively go in there and start writing unit tests against our core data instance. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Jonathan, how do we fix this? No problem, I've got you. What we can do here is instead of having just one core data instance, we can break it into two. We can create a core data stack, which we use only in our application. So all reads and writes go against this one. And then for our unit test, we create a separate view context. This one's going to be in memory. It's going to be much faster, much better for unit testing. And this is one that we use for unit tests. So in code, that looks like this. If we go over to our app first. We're going to create a core data stack. And what this thing is going to do is it's going to set up our persistent container, a main context, which is the one we're just going to use to read and write to. And it's just going to create this object for us. And we're going to pass that into our medium employee manager because we're getting a little bit more complex now, but it's not that complex. We're just passing in this main context on the initializer. So when our app runs now, it's going to have its main context that it can work against. But when we go to the unit tests, we're gonna have the exact same thing, only this stack is just for the unit tests. It's just, it's gonna use the same data model. It's gonna load it up, but this time it's gonna set it up in memory, way better, way faster. We don't wanna to write to disk when we're writing unit tests. It's way too slow. And we can make use of that in our medium employee manager tests. So we create that stack, we pass it into our employee manager and boom, now we've got this beautiful world of separate stacks. We can run these things over and over again, and this works just like butter. This is great. Now I know what you're thinking. Jonathan, I heard it was good to set up actually multiple stacks in your application. In rare instances, when you've got to do some really heavy core data lifting, it's good to have a main view context for reads and a background thread context for writes. And you'd be absolutely right. In rare circumstances, you can set both of these up. So how do you handle that from unit tests? No problem. All we do here is create a main and background context, 
set those up in our core data stacks for our app and for our unit tests, and then use those. So in code, that looks like this. If we go over now and take a look at our core data stack again, last time we just used the main context, but we can throw another one in there. This is the background context. This is the one that we're going to update and write to and only do our really quick reads off the main context. So in code, that's gonna look like this. We've got a complex employee manager. It has two contexts, one for reading, one for writing. And we just use the appropriate one uh, when we're actually creating or reading. So in the case of a create, we're gonna do that on the background thread context. Delete, we can do that in the background too. Same with update. But for fetch, that one we're gonna do in the main because we want that one to be uh, very quick. And it typically is very quick. Remember, we only need to do this in those really circumstances where we've got a lot of slow reads and writes but we can change and decide whether we want to do it on the main or the background context in our manager here so now when we come over to the tests we can create our core data stack again pass in a main or background whoops background context here and if we have the same tests here where we're creating and deleting now we can run these and boom they'll work just like butter or will they so this is a gotcha. In the unit test here, we actually don't want to work against the background thread. We want to work and we can do both against the main thread. It's a slightly different test. Yes, we're not exactly doing exactly what the code is saying, but it's perfectly fine from a unit testing point of view. Because the thing you've got to remember is when you're running unit tests, you're running on the main thread. So we actually want to work on the main thread even though it looks like we have a background context here, but because our simulator runs in the main thread, we always want to read from the main thread, and that's the main gotcha that when it comes with these. Now, if you are working with multiple background contexts, let me show you the most important debugger setting to have when you're writing unit tests or working with core data in general, and that is enabling the concurrency debugger. What this is, is this is an Apple setting that we can set on our runtime to basically give us more information when something goes wrong, specifically when we cross the streams when we're working with core context. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good, bad thing. What do you mean bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. You see, one of the cardinal rules of working with core data is we never want to cross reads or streams when we're working with managed context. If we're working on the main thread, we want to make sure we're not working with a context from the background thread. And if we got something from the background thread, we don't want to do it on the main thread. Very, very important, huge source of common errors. One way we can catch these is to enable this debugger setting in our runtime. So if you go shift command comma, you can bring up the runtime. You can hit this plus sign here on the run and add this argument to be passed in a launch. This sets the concurrency deb debugger to one. That enables it. And if you run unit tests where you do have a problem with crossing the streams, you're going to get a runtime breakpoint like this. It's literally going to say bad instruction execute invop subcode zero comma zero x zero. This is exactly what it will say. It's not the greatest debug instruction, but what it's really telling you is you're crossing your streams. You've got a problem in your unit tests and there could be danger there. It might work, but it might not. So by enabling that debugger, you can catch bugs like this in your runtime and your unit tests and ensure your core data and your streams are working perfectly. Okay, well, hopefully that helped. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this, do hit subscribe. And remember, all the source code and everything is available on my website, which you can find in the show notes. Okay, thanks for coming, everyone. Stay safe out there and have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.